Welcome to Upticks with Jake Falcon, founder and CEO of Falcon Wealth Advisors. In this podcast, we help high net worth individuals overcome financial complexities. We do this by enhancing financial literacy and discussing topics in a language free from industry jargon. Join us as we help explain exactly what having a solid financial plan means as Jake draws from years of experience in helping hundreds of individuals get financially organized and focused on their goals. We hope you find Uptix educational, entertaining, and shareable. Now, on to the show. Welcome back to the show. This is episode 252, Roth Conversions. Matthew, thank you for joining me on our palindrome episode. Good morning, Jake. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be back on the show. Yeah, and I guess summertime is here because Core and I keep crossing paths. He is now out on a much deserved vacation. So uh, we're looking forward to having him back in the office here in a week or so. Um, so thanks again uh, for coming in. I know you've been very busy uh, meeting with clients and this is our tax planning season. So I know you've been crunching some numbers, but before we get in today's show, uh, what's new in your life? Ooh, what's new in life? Um, I guess this week I'm heading on vacation as well, so I'll be joining Corey, but I will be in D.C. visiting my sister. Um, so we might go to like the White House, we'll go to Library of Congress, uh, a few other museums, but just going to spend some time with her because I, I haven't seen her since she's uh, moved out to Virginia. So it'll be a, a fun trip. Jordan and I will, will be out there, so. Good for you. Yeah, good for you. Have a safe trip. And, uh, you know, D.C. is an awesome city, I think. Uh, you know, there's a lot of history there. Obviously, the museum uh, scene is cool. So, uh, yeah, have fun. Have you been in the new airport in Kansas City yet? I have uh, for our honeymoon when we went to uh, oh, yeah. California. Uh, I thought it was easy. Like, there was no TSA line. Uh, the only difficult part was kind of finding our terminal. There was just a lot more, more walking, but I thought it was a beautiful airport. They did a good job with it. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, before I didn't really care, but you know, what's to me, the nicest thing about it is coming home to it. It's just a nicer welcome home that you're in this newer building and, you know, the gates are big and, you know, if you knew, if you, if you are hungry or need anything, it's there before you really probably wouldn't have, you'd be out of luck. <laughs> so it's nice coming home to, to that and uh, good, good. We'll have a safe trip. Well, we can't wait to hear all about it. Uh, with me, you know, same. I, the good news is my travel schedule hopefully is calmed down now. So my plan is to work, 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 which is uh, one of the things I love doing most. So I'm excited to be back in the office. And for all of our viewers out there, thank you again for tuning in. Uh, be sure to subscribe to Upticks, whether you're watching us on YouTube or listening to us on your favorite podcast platform. That's the best way to make sure that you don't miss an episode. Also, if you think our content's any good, a thumbs up or a five-star rating is much appreciated. All right, for today's topic, though, Matthew, we wanted to talk all about Roth conversions. Uh, this is an advanced tax planning strategy uh, that I know you and the rest of our planners have been diligently working on with our clients, but I think it's very important to do a whole episode of Upticks on it. So I wanted to go into it today because it's a very impactful strategy and it's very important that our audience understands the nuances of how these things work so before we go into the conversion itself matthew why don't you just define what a roth ira is because our audience might not be that familiar with it absolutely and this is probably one of my favorite things to talk about so i i think to be a good place to start would to back up and to first start with a traditional ira um, so what a traditional ira is when you contribute to it, you get a tax deduction that year. So you lower your taxable income in the current year, uh, but ultimately you're kind of just kicking a can down the road because whenever you take the money out of the traditional IRA, you have to pay taxes at that point. Um, so the Roth IRA, to your, to your question, Jake, is the basically complete opposite. Um, so whenever you contribute to a Roth IRA, you don't get a tax deduction up front. Uh, but since you contributed after tax dollars and you didn't get that tax deduction, whenever you take the money out of the Roth IRA, it's tax free at that point because you already paid the taxes on it. Good, good. Yeah, so that makes a lot of sense. So the traditional is typically funded with pre tax. Now, again, today we're not going to go into all the details with the rules and the deductibility and the Roth because there are limitations. So, again, before you do any of this, certainly meet with uh, your friends at Falcon Wealth Advisors. And if we need to bring in your CPA, uh, to finally tune those tax qualifications. We'll certainly do that as well. Um, but again, we're talking broadly. So again, good point. So typically we like to see traditional IRAs 
You can also think of it as a pre-tax 401k uh, versus a Roth 401k. A lot of our clients have Roth 401k as options in their retirement plan. So pre-tax with the traditional, after tax with the Roth. When you pull out from the traditional IRA, it'll be taxed as income. When you pull out from the Roth, again, as long as the criteria is met, it could be tax-free. Awesome. So let's go on then and talk about what problem then are we looking to solve for with these this tax planning with these Roth IRAs? So what problem are you solving for when you're looking at Roth conversions? Yep. So the main problem we see, Jake, is uh, Roth IRAs weren't around until the late 90s, I believe. Uh, so some of the people that we're meeting with, they really only had IRAs and pre-tax 401ks to contribute while they were working. Um, so you, they might have these you know, huge IRAs, for, huge 401ks. And once they turn 73 or 75 now, uh, based off required minimum distributions, uh, they might be in a higher tax bracket in retirement once that begins than they were in their earlier years uh, because they have so much money in these pre-tax accounts. And the IRS finally wants them to you know, take that money out and pay them uh, their tax bill, essentially. Right, right. So let's unpack that a little bit. So uh, again, what you're referring to is called the required minimum distribution age. Uh, just as soon as a few years ago, that age was 70 and a half. Then they changed it to 72. And now based on when you were born, they made it nice and complicated. It's either age 73 or 75. But you're going to be forced to pull from any pre-tax retirement accounts um, based on your age, right? And so in it, typically the number is around 4%. So just, just roughly here, if you have $2 million all in an IRA, a traditional IRA, and let's say your age is 75, well, the government's going to make you pull approximately $80,000 out. And that's going to go directly as ordinary income on your taxes. Now you couple that with social security, uh, maybe a pension, any other income sources. And that's what Matthew, I think you're getting at is that it could potentially force you into these higher brackets when you're in your 70s and 80s and 90s. And so we are trying to solve or lower your lifetime tax that you pay the government. That's really what these Roth conversions are designed to do is that, you know, when we're looking at your tax planning, we are looking at 20, 30, 40 years. And if we can convert some money from an IRA to a Roth, and lower that lifetime tax, that's what we're really trying to solve for. So we wanna keep you in a lower bracket longer and pay a less lifetime tax to the government. Now, let's go into the actual transition of moving the IRA to a Roth, because I know you're obviously very familiar with this. Can you explain some of the details that, that, that exactly how that works for clients when they are looking at a Roth conversion? Yeah, so the process is pretty simple. Um, so you would have that pre-tax you know, IRA, um, then we'll open a Roth IRA for you. And sometimes they'll just have a zero balance uh, because people haven't contributed to it. Uh, but ultimately, we'll just move some of that pre-tax account over to Roth. Uh, and what that will involve is, you know, just a calling Schwab and facilitating or your custodian. Uh, but the big thing we want to consider is paying taxes because whenever we move that money from the pre-tax IRA to the Roth IRA, it's a taxable event and Uncle Sam's going to want their share. But once it's in the Roth, that's when it's growing you know, tax-free and it's not subject to those required minimum distributions. Right. So, and we can move cash or the outright stocks and bonds that you own, right? It doesn't, we don't need to sell anything either, which is nice. Yeah. And a lot of times we want to move, you know, positions in kind, especially stock, uh, because the Roth IRA is tax-free. We want to try to maximize that growth. Right, right. So we'll literally just work with our custodian or, or, or you know, and clients can do work with their other advisor if they have a different advisor. But um, so again, you just move money from the traditional to the Roth, but you're right, this is a taxable event. So if you move 50,000 over from your IRA to your Roth, that's going to, you're going to have to pay taxes on that $50,000. And typically, we're going to recommend that you pay taxes from a different account, you know, a savings account, checking account, a brokerage account, some non-retirement account because then you get to move that whole 50,000 into the Roth. See, if you, if you use the IRA to pay the taxes, then you might not be able to convert as much and you're kind of defeating the purpose a little bit. Exactly, it's, the best case is to use it um, like an after-tax account, like cash that you have in savings or a brokerage account to pay the tax, because that way that full 50,000 gets to go in there and it gets to grow tax-free. Right, and there also are some rules with this conversion, right, Matthew? So people can't move money from an IRA into a Roth and then immediately pull it out. Doesn't the money need to sit there for a certain time frame? 
Yes, yeah, so that's one of the common mistakes uh, is that uh, there's a five-year rule for each Roth conversion. Um, so you can, if you're over age 59 and a half, uh, you could take out, you know, this example, 50000 You could take that out immediately because you've already paid the taxes on it. Uh, but if you're under 59 and a half, that's when you might have a 10% um, pen, early withdrawal penalty. Um, so you want to be careful about that. Uh, then there's also the five-year uh, clock on earnings. Um, so if that 50000 grows to 60000 and you take out the full 60000 in the five years, uh, then you owe income tax on that 10000 just the earnings and the growth there. Uh, so it's something you really want to be careful of. And ultimately, when we're doing these Roth conversions, we really want to think for long term. We wouldn't want to just do a Roth conversion and you know take it out six months later. Right, exactly. Because if you're gonna if you're gonna spend the money or need the money anyways, you're gonna have to pay taxes on it when you pull it out of your IRA. There's no reason just to put it in a Roth if you're just gonna turn around and pull it out again. So like that's a really good point. This is for a long term. Maybe this is for your heirs, right? Maybe this money's not even for you. And you're like, look, I've got more money than I need in my IRA. I don't want to pay taxes in my 70s at a higher rate than I am today. Uh, and I want my kids to inherit some tax-free money, right? This is what a scenario that might make sense to look at doing a Roth conversion. Uh, now, again, quick point, don't take this episode as advice. I don't want clients out there just converting money without talking to us or going through their financial plan because literally every client is different. And what we'll do as part of our financial planning process is we'll project out what do the next 30 years look like? And are you going to have a required minimum distribution issue, right? So that's the problem we're looking to solve for. Or is your lifetime tax so egregious that we, we need to do some planning to try to mitigate that? So that's really the problems that we're looking to solve for. You already mentioned one of the unknowns is that you've got to leave the money in there uh, as far as the, pulling out the earnings. Are there any other unknowns that maybe people watching this show should be aware of uh, so that they don't you know, fall into a trap and, and make a big mistake? Yeah, so there, there's two big unknowns, and unfortunately, we don't have the crystal ball. Uh, but the first one I would say is tax rates. Um, you know, historically, we are um, you know close to all-time lows on taxes, uh, so there's a good chance you know taxes are going to go up in the future. Uh, but if they don't, and you end up paying taxes now at a higher rate, and taxes go lower in the future, then it's not going to work out in your favor. Uh, so the big thing that we don't know is what future taxes are, are going to be, because that's just kind of the black you know, mystery box. Who knows what you know, Congress is going to do there? Yeah, that's a good one, right? So again, if we knew what the tax rates were going to look like the next 30 or 40, 40 years, we could tell you exactly what to do with certainty. Just like investing, there's going to be unknowns, right? But again, with tax planning, if we already know you're going to have to pull out approximately 4% when you're 75, and that's going to push you into a bracket no matter what the bracket is, you're not going to be comfortable with it. That's why we're looking at some of these um, conversions. I think another unknown that I wanted to point out today is that some people think that Roth IRAs are only for that younger generation, right? For people in their 20s and 30s or for low income earners. It might not necessarily be the case, right? You might be in a high bracket already. You might be in the top bracket and it may still make sense to convert some money to a Roth IRA because again, we're talking about your lifetime tax not just this year. Uh, I think a lot of CPAs typically just look at it year over year. We're looking at a 20, 30 year tax planning projection. And so uh, even if you're in the top bracket, I, I wouldn't want you to just dismiss these Roth conversions because again, you might have to rip the Band-Aid and, and pay a little bit more in taxes today to hopefully get a bigger benefit later in life. So again, I think that's another unknown is that they're not just for young people in low brackets. You know, Older people in higher brackets can benefit from these Roth conversions as well. Exactly. I'll say a good example of that is if you're in the highest tax bracket and you have, you know, some tech stock that's down, you know, 30, 40 uh, percent and you're still optimistic on the stock, it might make sense to convert that position, that tech stock, move it over to your Roth uh, with the hopes that it you know shoots up and recovers some value because then all that growth is tax free. So even if you're in the top bracket, you know, that's a strategy uh, that could work out in your favor. Yeah, very good point. And forgive me with the video quality. The sun is just gorgeous yeah. this morning. It's really uh, glaring things, but we're going to change the timing of these recordings. So hopefully uh, that's crazy though, isn't it? That's yeah, something. I got mine if I move my head. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I don't know what's going on. I got a strong light. All right, so um, good, good, good point. So, th so those are the unknowns. All right, so let's talk about um, some um, 
you know, what should clients be doing now, right? And, and let's really go into, rather than waiting to, to do this, what, what should clients do right now? Uh, the first step is to meet with your financial advisor and create a plan. Because uh, that once you have a plan and you know, you know how much you're going to need in the future, what your future required minimum distributions may be, that's when you can really crunch the numbers with your goals and see what you know potentially your future tax rate would meet would be, and what your current tax uh, bill looks like this year. Because uh, we want to have the plan and we want to have your most recent tax return, and then we can really see if this, this is an opportunity for you. Right. And so, again, this is a, a perk of being a client of Falcon Wealth Advisors is, you know, many advisors do financial planning. We, we feel that that's table stakes if you're going to hire a wealth advisor to work with you. Where we take it to the next level is we have invested in a third party software called Holista Plan, which actually will, will scan in your full tax return. And that gives us a nice summary. So, again, Matthew and, the, and our other planners will look at your financial plan and that tax return and then figure out if a Roth conversion makes sense. So if you're a client of Falcon Wealth Advisors, we would highly encourage you not to wait, to go ahead and do that now. Even if we wait until the fourth quarter to do the Roth conversion, at least Matthew and, and the rest of the planners will have a good understanding of where you sit tax-wise so that when we're having this conversation in October and November, it's easy for us to execute on and we're not scrambling and you're not having to dig to find your tax return and all of those things. And so, again, the thing to do right now is to not wait. Take us up on it. Let's meet now. Let's go over your tax return. Let's go over your financial plan. And let's see if a Roth conversion makes sense. And I also want to encourage clients that this should happen every year. Uh, I wish it was a one-time conversation and we could just dismiss it. But if you have an IRA, you really should be talking about this every year with your advisor. And that's why we've built that into our process is that you know, our financial planners will go through the tax planning with our clients every year because your tax situation changes, the tax code changes, life happens. And so we want to review that return every year just to see if a Roth conversion makes sense or maybe some other tax planning strategies. Absolutely. And if you're still working, you know, maybe instead of doing pre-tax contributions now, we can evaluate whether you're doing Roth contributions now. It's not something that we have to wait until you're retired because um, ideally we start this process years before you're subject to this required minimum distributions. That way we have time and plenty of planning opportunities. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. And I, yeah, and maybe I, I, didn't, I left that off is that this isn't just for the retiree, right? You may be 45 years old and in a high bracket, you may have an IRA uh, that we rolled a 401k into from a previous job. It may make sense to convert that now, especially if you're younger, because you have that much more time to benefit from this tax-free growth that a Roth IRA provides. So yeah, don't think this is just for retirees. Retirees can certainly benefit from it, but uh, people still working can as well. Um, so it you know, just makes, you know, I personally converted money from an IRA to a Roth IRA, right? And so uh, again, it's something that I look at every year with Matthew and the financial planners. And if we think it makes sense for my long-term tax planning, then we do it, right? And that, that's something that, again, I think every client can benefit from in a conversation we should be having. All right, good, Matthew. As we wrap up today's show, are there any other mistakes or unknowns or anything that I missed that you think is very important for our clients to, to understand or our audience? Yeah, we, we touched on some of the common mistakes with the five-year uh, clock on each conversion. I would say a few other common mistakes is that people convert, you know, too little because uh, they, they might have, you know, a low tax bracket or tax bill this year and they think they're, you know, doing a great job. But as you alluded to multiple times, it's not the lowest tax bill this year. It's the lowest lifetime tax bill. That's that's really who wins at the end, whoever pays Uncle Sam in the less uh, amount over their life. That's really good, Matthew. You know, I, I would encourage our audience, again, not to be penny wise and dollar dumb, right? So it's like, oh, Jake, I don't want to pay 10000 more in taxes, even though you can afford it, right? But we'll show you. It's like, well, you're going to save 100000 just for example, over your lifetime. So you're telling me you don't want to pay ten grand a day to save 100000 over the next 10, 20, 30 years? So again, that would be an example of being penny wise or pinching your pennies when it's like, look, you're, you're going to save yourself hundred thousand dollars not ten grand so you're right uh, don't be shy on that and again we're dealing with unknowns and i think that's what makes it difficult for some people to do but i'm telling you our clients that have to pull those required minimum distributions it's frustrating when they don't need the money 
and they're forced to pull it out and they're paying taxes at a higher rate, it's not a situation you want to be in in your 70s if in your 50s and your 60s, you could have done some planning to avoid that. So again, that's what we're trying to get ahead of for our clients uh, so that you're not 75 years old and pulling out 80 grand a year that you don't even need, right? And then who knows, like you said, Matthew, who knows what tax rates are? You know, tax rates as they, they probably feel high for everybody, but historically speaking, they're actually very low. And so um, we don't think they're gonna go lower. They could, but we don't think that's going to happen. Uh, so if we think tax rates are going to go higher, and as you get older, you're going to be forced to pull, why wouldn't you pay some taxes now, even if it's going to you know, deplete your savings and checking a little bit? Again, if your financial plan can afford for you to do that, or again, to save tons of money later in taxes. So don't be penny wise and dollar dumb. That's a big mistake. Good. Yep. Good. Anything? Another, yeah. yeah, another big mistake is, I just said converting too too little, but if you convert too much, though, you can have what's called a tax torpedo, and it'll affect your Social Security taxes, it'll affect your health care, your Medicare premiums. If you're on the open market, it'll affect you know, your health care subsidies. Um, so you really want to crunch the numbers, because if you're a dollar over a threshold, it can throw you in, into a tax torpedo and, and significantly increase your taxes. That's nice. Did you come up with that tax torpedo, or is that for someone else? I've been, that's just the term in our industry. I've heard a few people say it, and it, it makes sense to me. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. Yeah, you're right. And that's the key of going through our holistic plan tax planning process is that um, we want to make sure that we don't go over. You don't want to ballpark this is what you're getting at. Like you don't want to just eyeball it and say, you know what, let's just do a hundred grand. That's, you know, whatever. That's a round number because you're right. <laughs> if, if you do too much, you could end up penalizing yourself or it could have been avoided if you did 90 grand, for example. So um, that's good. So not doing too little, not doing too much. Uh, and again, crunching those numbers every year. That's what we're here. That's why we've built out the whole financial planning group that now consists of actually five professionals, right? So you've got Matthew, yourself, Jake Cross, Joe Abara, you know, Tyler and Jordan. You guys are all here to support our clients in crunching these numbers. That's what you guys do. You guys get into the weeds you get into the details of this uh, and you help clients make good informed decisions. Very good. Thank you. Is there anything else we left out that you wanted to, to make sure our, our, our millions of potential viewers knew today? No, I think we covered a lot, um, maybe a little bit too much. So please feel free to you know, give us a call, lean on us. Um, I'm happy to talk you know, taxes all day and crunch the numbers. Uh, so you don't have to go, go alone. You, know, you, you don't have to do this by yourself. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, so don't don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, it's simple as setting up a plan uh, or a meeting with Matthew and our financial planners, and they can walk you through this process. And, and, and important note here, we are not looking to replace your accountant or your CPA. We're, what we're suggesting is not filing your taxes. We want to get that already filed return, and then we want to use that to do financial and tax planning. That's what we're really talking about here. Uh, and again, it's a perk of being a client at Falcon Wealth Advisors. That's what you get in our offering. Uh, and hopefully we feel that we can add a ton of value uh, in your financial plan by looking at this thing every year and making sure you're not overpaying Uncle Sam. All right, good. Well, thank you, Matthew. Thank you for joining me on the show. The sun is rising, so I'm sure our team is starting to arrive to our office. Um, have a safe trip uh, to Virginia and D.C. And thank you all, as always, for tuning in. Uh, thanks again, and we hope you have a great week. Thank you for listening to Upticks. Click the subscribe button to be notified when new episodes become available. Also, be sure to visit our website, falconwealthadvisors.com, and click the Contact Us button if you'd like to meet with Jake and his team.